Okay, so well, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, Judy, would you do the roll call, please? Indeed. <coughs> Toby? Here. Asplund? Yes. Pelzell? Here. Abraham? Present. And Susan didn't speak in here. No, uh, not here this evening are uh, Susan Stiles and Matt Reed, who are both unavailable this evening. Also present, present are Patty Bates, the village manager, and village solicitor Chris Conner. Okay. Review of agenda. Do we want to make any changes other than the uh, review of minutes on the table? Sounds good. Okay. Let's table the minutes until next meeting. Uh, we didn't receive any communications. Uh, just now, just, uh, at your at your. Just the uh, that you, the signatures that we just got. All right, uh, any Roberts Council reports? Anything from Working Council? Um, I'm sorry, I was not actually prepared for my council report, so okay. I had this other thinking about it. Maybe Pat, it can help me out. Do you feel like there's anything we should, we should report? We've been talking about utilities. Um, utilities standardizing the conditions. Um, yes. Those are the and the water plan process are the primary topics we work on today. Yeah, okay. I think another and budget, small and budget that should be mentioned is the um, the change to planning commission membership in the charter review. Just as an update, ah, yes, oh. that is true. The charter review that we are voting on in the next election will simply um, allow for somebody to be from the Miami Township and not require it. We found it was often difficult to find somebody um, to serve and we were kind of holding our Miami Township member hostage because we couldn't find somebody else to, to serve. So now Susan Stiles lives in the township so she is serving that role. But um, we'd rather have it be optional for a member to live in the township than to require the planning commission to have somebody from township. So that's part of the charter vote. And, it, and it's actually reside outside of the village of Yellow Springs rather than simply in the yes, township. Yes, you must, the, that it required one person to be outside the village in the township. Okay. Uh, citizens comments, this is the time where people want to make a comment that's something that's not on the agenda. I'll take that as a note. Okay, we've got uh, two public hearings this evening. Uh, one is a conditional use application on Herman Street, and the other one would be text amendments. So uh, we'll start with the conditional use first. Um, do you want to give us a little overview before you open up the hearing? Uh, yes, um, we have a conditional use application from uh, creative Explorations, um, they would like to move their operation from uh, Xenia Avenue in the 200 block um, to 209 East Herman Street, which is an RV moderate density residential district. Um, however, they don't fit any, into any particular category for conditional use, which is why um, we are recommending that they be considered under the other category um, which allows for uses that are similar to those listed as conditional uses, but do not conform 100% to those uses. Um, so they have made a conditional use application uh, under the other category before this mission. Okay, I have questions for Patty? Okay, so the next step is to Open the public hearing. Typically, we hear yeah. from the, the applicant. Okay. Do you want to? I'll make sure Mark receives it. Okay. Uh, if you would, Mike, then come up and say a piece about uh, <coughs> your project. And anything that Assuming I need to be at the mic? That would be this. Okay. And please state your name. Okay. Um, I'm Jennifer Water. I'm going to do a little back in short changes. You're good. I'm Jennifer Porter, and I'm the owner-operator of Creative Explorations Women's Retreat. Um, 
I could spend the night on the building at 253 Zini Avenue, and I've had the retreat operating for about nine years on the second floor of that building. I would like to simplify life. We would like to sell that very old, but very wonderful building and move the retreat to Herman Street. Um, the 209 East Herman is presently owned by Rick and Chris Christensen, and they have been operating, I believe, for three years as a short stay facility. So it currently is a lodging facility. Um, two doors down from that is a massage practice, doula services, and then beside that is Moon Rose, which is also um, uh, a business, which is a massage uh, spa services. And I, I think the, as I went around yesterday and spoke to some of the neighbors, I think that the question, if anybody questioned it at all, they were questioning the, the what is the work of retreat sort of um, needed to be defined for them. So there were some questions like, is this a halfway house? Is this crisis intervention or something like that? And I should have been absolutely not. Um, that in my years of operating the retreat, I screen everyone. Um, which is unlike what is currently there, where there's an online calendar, and if you put in your credit card, you're in. Um, so all of the women that I um, invite as my guest in the retreat, I have contact with them. And remarkably few women I've actually had to turn away because they were in a, a, an acute state of crisis. And I make sure um, that if someone is in transition, for example, I, I make sure that they have their own self-care package intact because nobody's going to be there if they have a meltdown. So um, that's to assure everyone that um, <coughs> people I work with are very high caliber um, women. They're on spiritual journeys. Um, they may be in transition. Children have left the home, they're changing careers, or whatever. Um, I am a licensed independent social worker, so my background is, is as a therapist. What I do is offer retreat guests two options. One is as a self-directed retreat, and then the other is I offer facilitated packages. In that situation, I work with the guests or guests. The vast majority of my um, women come individually. It's part of the uniqueness of my service is that um, we work one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a group program where everybody goes through the same sort of program. It's an individualized, customized process. Um, I lost my train of thought. I don't know if that's sufficient information. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess at this time we'll open the public hearing. Any <coughs> comments to the application at hand? Please feel free to come up to the mic and say your piece. Okay. Because we shouldn't have anything there for the applicant. Or questions for the applicant? Questions about the staff report? Um, well, I think it would be helpful to maybe just go over the recommendation, um, what it means to approve with the findings of fact. Maybe you could just kind of walk us through what, what that language exactly means. Okay. Um, sure. The, um, if you look at the, um, the general standards, section 1262.03, it's on the second page of the staff report. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that, um, 
any request for conditional use shall only be approved upon finding that each of the following general conditions is satisfied in addition to any applicable requirements pertaining to the specific use. So in order to grant it, this commission has to ensure that each, each and every one of those is met, um, which is not, I do not believe is gonna be a problem, but you do have to ensure that. Um, the 1260204, the conditions of approval, what that means is that you can um, put any specific additional conditions upon it, such as hours of operation, numbers of people, different things like that. Section 1260208 is the professional office section and has no specific requirements for this zoning district. Um, this use is kind of a professional office, um, uh, part professional office, part B&B for lack of a better category to fit it into. Um, 1260208 is the general office and has a professional office and has no specific requirements. 1260208E2 is bed and breakfast and it, it lists the requirements there for bed and breakfast. Again, I do not believe that this use is gonna have any problem meeting any of those conditions. So the recommendation of staff to the planning commission is to approve the conditional use with the following findings of fact, which are listed in the bullet points of the report. Um, and if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to try to address them. Um, is this the kind of thing that we should, we should just accept that occasionally there's going to be things that don't <coughs> quite fit in our Yes, in our zoning code, and, and that this, this is a satisfactory kind of solution to that? Yes, in fact, it's why the other category actually exists, is because this, is, this use is compatible to the, to the neighborhood. There are other similar uses nearby in the neighborhood, but it doesn't fit neatly, uh, for lack of a better word, into any specific category. It kind of is a professional office. It's kind of a B and that's why the other category exists in the code. That's all my questions. Yeah, my hangups were, you know, calling it a meeting. Right. <laughs> it's a 650 square foot house, and it's supposed to be 1,500 square feet. And it's going to be a principal residence. So, um, uh, one of the things I do have is the, just the standard stuff, uh, the signage. One of the things that Denise does note in her staffers report is that council may want or uh, the commission may want to look at the signage. Um, I'm trying to it's four square feet for it. There is a specific uh, and I should have highlighted that I apologize I didn't. There is a specific note in your report yeah, as to I remember reading it today. Ah, uh, it is the very last paragraph. As there are no specific requirements for a professional office, the condition of use does meet requirements for all street parking. The planning commission may want to review any potential signage to ensure the well-being of adjacent neighbors. So um, it did. We could also just say staff should review that and not uh, I could not make them come back to I don't see any point in coming back to planning commission, that's for sure. Yes, that could fall to staff. That would be fine. Okay. Any other questions? So is this the time we close the public hearing? We close the public hearing. Okay. Sorry. Well, that's it. You asked for comment from folks. Sure. Yes. Sorry, I was talking. What do you make sure? So I move that we approve this conditional use with the with the finding of facts as listed in the last page of the staff report, and that we ask um, staff to review any potential signage to ensure the well-being of adjacent neighbors. That's my motion. Sorry, I'll second the motion. <laughs> And I would like to also note for the report that they did present the list of signatures from the neighbors to be included in the mm -hmm. official record. 
The use may, may be conducted entirely within a garage or accessory building unattached to the dwelling in property zone RA or RB, but it does not currently address RC. Um, while RC is high density residential, a lot of places the density of the homes is equal to what it is in RB. So it's the feeling of staff that this was simply an oversight, that RC was not listed in the original code, and we recommended adding RC and allowing the home occupations in that district under these conditions as well. Okay. Any questions? I'll open the public hearing on this on 1262.08. Comments? Thank you. Okay. I will close the hearings on 1262.08. Anybody have a motion? Uh, I, I move to accept the uh, text amendments to uh, 128205. No, 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 the other one. Oh, I just turned the page on the second. 126208, I'll take some of the sugar. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I move to uh, approve the textual amendments to 126208 specific use requirements for home occupation. I second. Yes, Abraham. Yes. 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 Okay. Now let's move on to old business. Agenda planning. Evidently, the Nora Burns home occupation permit and Donna Howard's home occupation permit are on the plate for the next year. That is correct. That is correct. And hold on. Anything else, Perky? Uh, what's correct? Not to my knowledge. Next, the next for next month for November, you should have Nora Burns should be ready with the home occupation permit. And Donna Heller is pulling her information together for her home occupation permit. So you should have two two items. I think there's another. When math is right, there's another. We can have people can still get get things mm -hmm. in. So that may you may catch another one in that okay. loop, but. You certainly have these two. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, if nothing else, I will make your motion for adjournment. So moved. Excellent. <laughs> Is that counted as a second PX? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I will second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> you all just like, came for the show? Or? Yeah, I said, we, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I miss politics. It's, uh, it's, a high drama. It is, it's, it's public theater at its finest. <laughs> Gosh, I think that was a short sure thing. So, um, well, I've been I, 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 two for I, two. Don't well, mind. This is my average like Just point of a point of point of something or other. Should uh, we have you have made a motion to send these text amendments on to council for approval? Then to do that. Yes, for purposes of the record, even though they approve, but we didn't think that's a good point, Jay. Just adjourned, though. You could just go back in. I'm reopening the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for the I'm purposes. Call. Okay, okay. Yes. 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 Yes.